Good day, and welcome to Hiroshima University's English Podcast. Welcome back, everyone. Yes, it's nice to have you here. I'm Kay. And Joe here. Today we have the conclusion to our four part ghost series by Lafcadio Hearn, also known as Koizumi Yakumo. Very sad. The final episode. The final one, Kay. But it will be an interesting one. So, no reason to be sad. Right. Joe, before we do the story, could you tell us about some of the tourist places associated with Koizumi Yakumo? Sure. First of all, in Matsue Shimane, there is the Lafcadio Hearn Memorial Museum. Oh, it's the easiest place for us to get to. Yes, it's next to the house where Hearn lived, and it's a beautiful, historic, samurai style building. The museum describes Hearn's life in detail. Each year, about 150,000 tourists go to the Matsue Museum. Wow! And there are two interesting Lafcadio Hearn places in Europe, okay? One is in Ireland. In the southern part of Ireland, and it's called the Lafcadio Hearn Gardens. It's part of the Tramore House where Hearn spent his summers as a boy. Oh, a Hearn Memorial in Ireland. Ireland seems like a cool place to visit. Yes, actually, the Hearn Garden just opened this summer. So it's brand new, okay? It was made partly due to the efforts of Koizumi Bone, who is the grandson of Lafcadio Hearn. The garden is unique because it features themes in Hearn's life, such as the American part and the Japanese part. So, at the memorial, people can learn about both Hearn's life and Irish culture. Oh, I want to try the Irish beer there. <laughs> I guess that's possible too. And one more good tourist place is the Lafcadio Hearn Historical Center on the island of Lafcada in Greece. Oh, a Koizumi Yakumo Museum in Greece? Yes, he was born on this island just off the west coast of Greece. The museum, which just opened up a couple of years ago, Has a good library and exhibition of Hearn's life. Oh, I'd like to go to Greece and Ireland. Sure, Kay. But before that, shall we finish our ghost series? Sure. Today, everyone, we have the final part of Yuki Onna. As you remember, the woman from the snow felt pity for Minokichi, so she did not kill him. But she said that in the future, if he told anyone about her, he would die. Oh dear, she's not good. <laughs> right. Anyway, during the winter of the next year, Minokichi was walking and he overtook a girl. That means he passed by a girl. Yes, he overtook a girl who just happened to be traveling on the same road. Guzenni, just happened to be. And her voice was as pleasant to the ear as the voice of a songbird. Pleasant means nice and feels good. This is a beautiful expression. Yes, her voice was as pleasant to the ear as the voice of a songbird. And she said she had lost her parents. That means her parents had already died. Her name was Oyuki, and she said she was going to Yedo where some of her poor relations lived. Relations are the same as relatives, shinseki. And she hoped those relations might find a situation for her as a servant. That means find some work for her as a shionin or hokonin, a servant. Minokichi soon felt charmed by her. That's a fancy way to say that he really liked her. 
Minokichi felt charmed by her. Oh, he was falling in love with her? Yep, and she said she was not betrothed to anyone yet. That's an older way to say she wasn't engaged to anyone. And he said he only had a widowed mother who he needed to support. Widowed means the mother's husband had already died. And Minokichi also said that he had not been looking for an honorable daughter in law yet. Honorable means good and respectable. And a daughter in law, of course, is Yome, Musuko no Tsuma. After these confidences, that's an older poetic way of saying after these private exchanges. After these confidences, they became very much pleased with each other. This, too, is a fancy way to say they liked or loved each other. Then, after some shy hesitation, After some shy hesitation, she went with Minokichi to his house, and Oyuki behaved so nicely that Minokichi's mother took a sudden fancy to her. That means Oyuki acted so nicely that the mother suddenly liked her. Yes, the mother took a sudden fancy to her. And the mother persuaded Yuki to delay her journey to Yedo. That means the mother convinced Oyuki to put off or to postpone going to Yedo. And then, da 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 da, they got married. Yeah! As the years passed, Peasant women and country folk in the area. That means the poor woman, kohekshio or inakamono. The peasant women and country folk always had words of affection and praise for Oyuki. That means they said they loved Oyuki and complimented her. Hometa. They had words of affection and praise for Oyuki because she was always beautiful. And because she bore ten children who were very fair of skin. She had ten children with white skin, like the snow, with fair skin. But, K, a ghost story does not end in happiness.、Mm, oh no. One night when Oyuki was sewing, when she was sewing, Minokichi told her about how many years before. A woman had stooped above him. That also means she was bending over him. And Minokichi said he had seen a being as beautiful as Oyuki was. A being, of course, is a human being, a person. But hearing the story, Oyuki suddenly flung down her sewing. That means she threw it down to fling. No kakoke wa flung des. She flung down her sewing and arose. She stood up quickly and bowed above Minokichi. That also means she stooped above him, was bending over him, or stooped over him, all the same. She bowed over him and shrieked. She yelled loudly. She shrieked that. But for the children asleep in the next room. Here, but for means if not for. But for the children, she would kill him at this moment. If the children did not exist, she would kill him immediately. So, luckily, Oyuki did not kill him. But before leaving, she told him. That if he did not take good care of the children in the future, she would treat him as he deserves. Soto suru. It sounds like she will kill him in the future if he does not treat the children very well. And with that, she melted into the bright white mist. The mist, kiri, 
the fog, the haze, ni toketa. She melted into the white mist and then spired to the roof beams. Togatta to no yoni, koya no hari no ue ni tonde agatte. She spired to the roof beams and then she disappeared through the smoke hold. A hole in the ceiling for smoke to go out. And she was never seen again. Yuki Onna, Part Two. One evening in the winter of the following year, as he was on his way home, he overtook a girl who happened to be traveling by the same road. She was a tall, slim girl, very good looking, and she answered Minokichi's greeting in a voice as pleasant to the ear as the voice of a songbird. Then he walked beside her and they began to talk. The girl said that her name was Oyuki, that she had lately lost both of her parents, and that she was going to Yedo, where she happened to have some poor relations who might help her to find a situation as a servant. Minokichi soon felt charmed by this strange girl, and the more that he looked at her, the handsomer she appeared to be. He asked her whether she was yet betrothed, and she answered, Laughingly, that she was free. Then, in her turn, she asked Minokichi whether he was married or a pledge to marry, and he told her that, although he had only a widowed mother to support, the question of an honorable daughter in law had not yet been considered, as he was very young. After these confidences, they walked on for a long while without speaking, but as the proverb declares, when the wish is there, the eyes can say as much as the mouth. By the time they reached the village, they had become very much pleased with each other. And then Minokuchi asked Oyuki to rest a while at his house. At some shy hesitation, she went there with him, and his mother made her welcome and prepared a warm meal for her. Oyuki behaved so nicely that Minokichi's mother took a sudden fancy to her and persuaded her to delay her journey to Yedo. And the natural end of the matter was that Yuki never went to Yedo at all. She remained in the house as an honorable daughter in law. Oyuki proved a very good daughter in law. When Minokichi's mother came to die, some five years later, her last words were words of affection and praise for the wife of her son. And Oyuki bore Minokichi ten children, boys and girls, handsome children all of them, in very fair skin. The country folk thought Oyuki a wonderful person, by nature different from themselves. Most of the peasant women age early, but Oyuki, even after having become the mother of ten children, looked as young and fresh as on the day when she had first come to the village. One night, after the children had gone to sleep, Oyuki was sewing by the light of a paper lamp, and Minokichi, watching her, said, To see you sewing there, with the light on your face, makes me think of a strange thing that happened when I was a lad of eighteen. I then saw somebody as beautiful and white as you are now. Indeed, she was very like you. Without lifting her eyes from her work, Oyuki responded, Tell me about her. Where did you see her? Then, Minokichi told her about the terrible night in the ferryman's hut, and about the white woman that had stooped above him, smiling and whispering, and about the silent death of old Mosaku, and he said, Asleep or awake, that was the only time that I saw a being as beautiful as you. Of course, she was not a human being, and I was afraid of her, very much afraid. But she was so white. Indeed, I have never been sure 
whether it was a dream that I saw or the woman of the snow. Oyuki flung down from her sewing and arose and bowed above Ninokichi where he sat and shrieked into his face. It was I, 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 Yuki, it was, and I told you then that I would kill you if you ever said one word about it. But for those children asleep there, I would kill you this moment. And now you had better take very, very good care of them, for if ever they have reason to complain of you, I will treat you as you deserve. Even as she screamed, her voice became thin, like a crying of wind. Then she melted into a bright white mist that spired to the roof beams and shuddered away through the smoke hole. Never again was she seen. Okay, during the last four months, our main characters have been haunted by an Oshidori, a Mujina, and Oyuki. Which would you hate to be haunted by? Mm, I will choose the Mujina, of course. <laughs> yeah, it would be bad to meet a faceless monster out there. But I will choose Oyuki in the story today. To be haunted by your own family member, someone you love, is not a pleasant ending. True. Everyone, we hope you liked our three stories from Koizumi Yakumo's Kwaidan. Right. Try to read more about Lafcadio Hearn and go to those three tourist places. If you do an internet search, you can see more information about them. And we're 100% certain that your English is improving. If you review these podcasts every day, your vocabulary ability will become excellent. Keep having fun with English, and we'll see you next time at Hiroshima University's English Podcast. Bye! Bye.